It's perhaps hard to believe that the television series Star Trek only ran from 1966 to 1969. But somewhere along the intergalactic highway, the identity of actor and novelist William Shatner became irrevocably fused with that of his starship commander, alter ego, Captain James T. Kirk. I had to take an MRI the other day. And you know what an MRI is? You go into those little thing and you're encapsulated. And I'm somewhat claustrophobic. And I'm thinking, I gotta talk myself down. I can't scream, Captain Kirk can't scream, but get me out of here! I couldn't do that. And then the guy running the MRI machine came up to me and said, I'm your biggest fan. Was it the dorky sound effects, the tight sweaters, the pointy ears, the polystyrene rocks, or Lieutenant Uhuru's cleavage that turned the low-rent sci-fi saga into a cult hit? Or was it the scriptwriter's decision to boldly go where no TV show had gone before? The acting was fun. I, I had uh, some fun things to do as an actor. Like, can you give us an example? Oh, double roles. Uh, there was one where the girl entered my body. Uh, it, there were weird things to do that, uh, that nobody else had to do ever before. Perhaps it was the chemistry between Captain Kirk and his trusty 2IC and science officer, Mr. Spock, which was clearly still bubbling away 40 years later. I first met Bill several years after, several years after Star Trek went on the air. <laughs> That's a funny line. <laughs> That's a, you're here. We're talking about Star Trek we for 40 busy. years, and those, that's the first time he said that. We were too busy making the shows to meet. We didn't meet, you know. He would go into makeup early in the morning, and I'd arrive jauntily <laughs> hours later, and then have to drag him. You know, by, by three hours of makeup, he was exhausted. The rest of the day, I had to drag He'd him. He'd carry me the rest of the day. Literally. And, I, and I'd say to him, What's your, who are you? What's your name? And he, 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 I had to introduce myself by the third year. He kept saying, well, this, this is frickin' frack, we do this for dinner. <laughs> Sadly, however, while dedicated Trekkies got to lap up the series reruns throughout the 1970s, William was doing it tough. After his wife walked out on him, the Canadian actor had to resort to doing television commercials for a supermarket chain and became an occasional guest on game shows. At his lowest point, he lived in a truck bed camper in the San Fernando Valley, taking on odd jobs and making appearances at parties. The wilderness years ended in 1979, when, under pressure from loyal fans of the series, he was hired by Paramount to star in Star Trek The Motion Picture. With a promotion to Admiral, he was back in the big chair and cruising at warp speed. He's never forgotten the die-hard Trekkies who supported him. What do I think of the Trekkies? I love each and every one of them. They are... <laughs> they are wonderful. Having been given a reprieve, he hung tightly to the controls, starring in another five Star Trek films, one of which he directed himself. During the 80s, he also made a return to television as veteran police officer T.J. Hooker. His other ventures have included releasing recordings of his recitations of famous songs like Mr. Tambourine Man, backed by psychedelic orchestral arrangements. He's also released a series of sci-fi novels, which he may or may not have written himself. For all his success and talents, however, it's probably fair to say that few people really took him seriously until he landed the part of oddball attorney Denny Crane in the final series of primetime legal drama The Practice in 2004. After all those years of hamming it up in space, he took out an Emmy for supporting actor in a drama series. What I was dreading was the disappointment of losing. Uh, I'd rather not be nominated. I, I don't really know whether I mean that or not. But you want the nomination, and then once you get the nomination, you want to win. But what you don't want is the, oh, gosh, I lost. And so you have a 20% chance of winning, I guess. And the thrill is unbounded. At the age of 64, he finally become part of the establishment and followed up by winning a Golden Globe and a second Emmy for his work in the spin-off hit Boston Legal. But he still wasn't giving away his day job as guest star at the endless round of Star Trek exhibitions and conventions, not to mention Star Trek The Tour. 40 years later, watch what happens when I press this button. 
Nothing. Just exactly the way it was. Like you back home. <laughs> Just like back home.